Welcome to Breakthrough Success. I am your host, Mark Birdie, the content marketing expert, bringing you three new episodes each week where I and top-level guests teach you how to take your business to the next level and achieve your breakthrough. Hello, Breakthrough Success listeners. I just wanted you all to know before the episode actually starts, I've been working a little bit behind the scenes to give you something really special. So a while ago, I wrote my book, Content Marketing Secrets, which helps people create, promote, and optimize their content for growth and revenue. And I just put the finishing touches together to offer that for free to anyone who is interested. So if you want your free copy of Content Marketing Secrets, all you have to do is head over to markgaberti.com slash book. Now, let's jump right into the episode. And if there is something that so many people want to achieve a breakthrough in, it is SEO. There's just so many articles out there about how to optimize SEO. Not all of those tips work, with some of them being the exception. Uh, you also have like just this idea that there's so much to do to have your website perfectly optimized for Google. And Google continues changing its algorithms. So um, SEO is just this really great uh, potential for traffic, but... Very few people have really mastered it, and it does change a little bit. So we're going to talk about uh, the few things that we need to do, the few essentials that will help us with our SEO, will help us get traffic, and hopefully that leads to sales, depending on how well our websites are set up. So today's guest, he is the founder of the Shore Oak Podcast, and he helps people grow their businesses with results-driven SEO. After several years of experimenting with different SEO strategies and tactics, he discovered that SEO comes down to three key things, which we will talk about in this episode. So today's guest for episode 285 of the Breakthrough Success Podcast is none other than Tom Cassano. Tom, it is such a pleasure to have you on the show. Mark, I am so thrilled to be here. I'm so excited. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm really looking forward to our convo. Tom, it is such a pleasure to have you on the show. And SEO, that's just the topic where uh, there's just so many ways to look at it. So I'm really happy that you really have this simple three-step approach or these three things that we should be focusing on. So we'll definitely talk about that. But I'm wondering if you can give us some background. Uh, first, a little bit of what attracted you to SEO. And also, I know you got started on the web in 1997. So I definitely want to hear a little bit about that as well, especially since I was born in 1998. So you got on the web before I was even born. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's great. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, 34 years old right now. And uh, yeah, I remember when America Online came out. And, um, yeah, back in that time, I, um, you know, I created some websites and I was learning HTML back in the day when you'd actually just like be, you know, putting, um, the less than and greater than signs in to kind of build oh, your wow. website on some, some, uh, platforms that don't exist anymore, like GeoCities. And, uh, you know, the web has changed a lot and, um, I had uh, launched a few websites uh, and businesses that never really got any traffic um, in the 2000s and in the early, like um, 2010, 2011, 2012. Uh, I remember one of those last websites I had launched and basically it was crickets. I remember I was creating some content, some blog posts, and basically no one was coming to the website and nothing was happening. And so... Um, uh, yeah, I mean, it, SEO was I, probably a phrase I hadn't even heard by, at that point. And I mean, it's interesting to hear like how much the web has evolved. And I mean, now you're in SEO, you're helping people get their results. I know that you've done all these different um, uh, experiments and now you help people based on, you know, so people don't make the uh, go through that same detailed trial and error. I know one of the things that you mentioned is really important for SEO is links. And I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about how do we go about uh, getting those links because there are a lot of right ways to do it, but there are also a lot of very wrong ways to do it as well, uh, like buying them and things like that. So I'm wondering if you could share your take on that. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm 100% um, excited to dive into it. So, um, and just to give more context, um, there are, um, I know we're going to talk about the, the different ranking factors and the most important ones to move the needle for your SEO to drive results. Um, so, yeah, along the way, I, I re- eventually learned a lot through trial and error and, and, and doing what the experts said and, and trying to, you know, optimize my site. And a lot of those things didn't drive results, Mark, but one of the most important things, like you just mentioned, is links. And so what, um, you know, some people who might not even know, like backlink is, a link from another site back to your website. And that's really important for Google because that's how they started um, their algorithm uh, and their way of looking at the web. Uh, Larry Page and Sergey Brin back in the day, they would crawl the web and find the number of links back to another site. And that would basically allow them to say, oh, the Wall Street Journal must be a good website to rank high in the search results because the Wall Street Journal is getting all of these backlinks from all these other sites. Therefore, for us to do SEO effectively and, you know, if you want to rank higher, get more traffic to your website, you need to get those very same backlinks like you mentioned, Mark. So the question is, okay, well, how do we get backlinks? And to be honest, there are so many different tactics and strategies. You know, there's guest posting, there's directories out there. Uh, some people do infographics, there's broken link building, um, there's PR you can do, um, there's... Um, there's just like, you know, an, an ever increasing number of tactics and ways to get links. Uh, and it is surprisingly um, very impactful for your ranking, but also pretty challenging because you can't force someone or make someone link back to you. Um, and, you know, it's against Google's guidelines to pay for links. And so a lot of webmasters and bloggers know the value of a link. And so if you just reach out and email them and say, hey, link back to me, they might not be that um, receptive or open to doing that. So some of these standard ways, um, even today, that uh, a lot of um, people who are actively doing link building, some of those ways will include guest posting, which is basically writing blog posts for another website. And when you write that blog post, there'll be a, a link back to your site. Um, which takes a lot of resources and time and energy. As you know, Mark, creating content, uh, you know, you really have to uh, put the time and energy into it, find the websites that you can guest post on uh, in order to get backlinks. So that's one way to do it. Um, there's other ways to do it as well. We could talk about there is PR, there is infographics, there is um, competitor analysis to see who's linking back to your uh, competitors' websites. So there is a broad different amount of ways um, that you can do link building. Uh, but of course, these things take time to learn and to understand really the best ways to get those links back to your site. And I mean, you mentioned a lot of them very interesting. I mean, like, oh, I feel like a lot of people know about the guest block, but the competitive analysis is something that I don't think as many people are thinking of because I think a lot of people who they're blogging, they're doing podcasts, they're doing videos, they have that creative mentality. Uh, I want to create to get to where I want to go, but that competitive analysis can help you find these uh, big opportunities as well. So it's interesting you brought up all those different ways that we can get more links. Uh, one thing I do want to ask you, though, is if you could only pick three, what are the ones that you would focus on the most uh, with the focus being on uh, quality and also getting a lot of those quality links as well? Mm, yeah, it's a good question. Um, one of them would be PR. Uh, one of them, probably guest posting just because it's um, a relatively tried and true pathway to get links. Uh, and a third one um, might be something called a scholarship, uh, which is basically um, your company offering a scholarship for your uh, business on your, on your website to uh, students at universities and then reaching out to universities themselves, to financial aid departments, letting them know about the scholarship that you're offering to students. And then universities, actually the .edu domains eventually uh, link back to you and your website. Wow, that's interesting. I mean, like, again, like, that's like a next level thing, like the scholarship. I don't feel like a lot of people would think about that as getting a backlink now. Um, I mean, I, I, I do want to explore that a little more. Like, for the scholarship, like, how much would you put in as a scholarship? And also, do you do it from an ROI standpoint? Like, maybe I invest $1,000, get this backlink, it leads to more traffic. Is this. Uh, just a mix of the business and uh, the whole good cause thing. Uh, but I'd really like to know what kind of results you see from that. Yeah, so we found the scholarship to be a pretty effective uh, link building strategy. Um, and, yeah, the way it works is kind of like you said, you uh, you know, a business creates a scholarship. Um, and there's there's a lot to that. I mean, um, you know, when's the deadline? What's the award amount, which $1,000 can cover it? Um, and, you know, what's the process for reviewing the, uh, the applicants? 
Um, and then what's the, you know, there's privacy policy and there's all those sorts of things. Um, so putting that together, uh, and then, you know, this is something that we do at my agency. So do having an outreach program. So reaching out to universities, like you said, there, there's goodwill and there's, you know, you're providing value. You're helping a student get their education. Uh, and then you have to find, and this is the whole thing of, um, Outreach and outreach is so important for link building because you have to be able to find the right person to contact and let them know about what it is you're offering. So in this case, we're talking about a scholarship, but it could very well be a guest post or an infographic or uh, maybe you did an original like data study and you have this original research and you want to get backlinks to it. Uh, and I'm going on a bit of a tangent here, but this is certainly one of the challenges, especially with content marketing, because what I see a lot of people do, Mark, is create massive amounts of amazing content, but there's like no one kind of, uh, there's not enough people really seeing that content. So even if you create another five or 10 more blog posts next month or this quarter, um, you know, if there's not enough people seeing it or if it's not getting in front of the right people who might link back to it, that's a challenge. So um, yeah, sa- along the same lines for the scholarship, um, creating it. And then of course, uh, the more important part really than the, the actual asset itself is finding those right people, getting it in front of them, and then in getting them to link back to it. And so uh, some tactics like these are good if um, the website is maybe relatively more new or maybe it's a startup or, you know, maybe the site has very few backlinks. Uh, when a business um, reaches a certain level of um, of what we might call domain authority, which means they've already have a lot of backlinks from around the web. And then we need to go to like a higher level strategy, which might be PR, might be creating um, original uh, research reports and those sorts of things to be link worthy assets. So uh, it certainly takes a lot of time. Um, and then I just want, we'll touch on also uh, the competitor analysis, which you mentioned, which is fairly straightforward. And what that means is um, if you are an e-commerce store for sweaters, uh, you can look at your competitor, who is also an e-commerce store for sweaters, and you can look at their backlink profile through a tool like uh, Ahrefs or SEMrush or Moz or there's a whole bunch out there. And that will give you all, the list of all the websites linking back to them. And then you can see what tactics and strategies they use to get their backlinks. And you might realize um, – and they did a certain kind of thing. Maybe they had like discounts or coupons, you know, and, and basically shared those with certain websites and got backlinks from them. And so you can basically uh, get a, a pretty clear list that, you know, uh, you know, this company, they uh, created a, a coupon or a discount uh, and these 20 websites link back to them. And so now I'm just going to um, these 20 websites, I'm going to put in a spreadsheet. I'm going to find the uh, an email address and a name of a person and see if I can get that same sort of backlink with that same tactic that my competitor used. So these are some of the ways that you want to uh, get links back to the site. And I can't stress enough the importance of outreach and finding the right person, uh, adding or creating value for them so that you can earn that backlink back. And again, I really like that whole idea of taking a deeper look, the uh, competitive analysis, seeing how uh, your competitors are getting backlinks and uh, reaching out to the same people. I mean, a lot of it is definitely outreach. And another thing you mentioned, uh, content being another uh, one of those key factors for SEO, you mentioned creating all this content uh, but then it doesn't really get visibility. Um, what is your approach for promoting that content so you're not the creator creating like these brilliant pieces of content, but on uh, on an island of one? Yeah, you know, it really comes down to being offsite, and that means um, uh, like someone like myself that uh, might be in the online internet space because it's nice for me to sit behind a computer and kind of do my own thing on my website. But um, there's this element of networking, of building relationships and being off of your website that is so valuable. And we see that a lot with social media, but social media doesn't necessarily translate one-to-one into SEO for link building, right? Maybe it does with relationships, but not for getting backlinks. So um, we really have to spend time, um, like there are people who will look at the 80-20 rule and say, look, you spend 20% of your time creating the content. The other 80% building relationships, promoting it, getting in front of the right people, um, seeing who might be interested in sharing it uh, to get those links. So um, it it takes time and it, it's almost like, um, I think people might avoid it because it's kind of like cold calling in sales in a way. It's like, I've never met this person before. I don't know who they are. Uh, Maybe I'm going to send them a cold email. But, you know, there's there's um, smoother, softer ways to start. Maybe it's in social media. Maybe you retweet them or uh, build a real. And these things take time. Right. And then this is another thing is like, you know, you only have so much time and people don't you know, it's hard to devote enough hours to all these activities. But uh, again, to get backlinks, you have to build relationships or maybe there's like podcast interviews is another one. Right. You uh, Mark, if you're uh, a guest on someone else's podcast, um, maybe they link back to you in the show notes. Um, so there's a myriad of different ways that we can earn backlinks, but it really 
really comes down to building relationships. And even uh, before we start creating the content, thinking about, um, let's say if we have like a, an SEO strategy in mind, so along with content marketing, but we're really thinking about how, you know, can we get links for our website? We really, before we create the content, we in the planning stages, we want to think about, hmm, what kind of content will be content that's likely to get backlinks to it? And you can even, again, from a competitor analysis standpoint, you can go on your competitor site and see their most linked to content and say, oh, wow, these guys did this infographic and they got, you know, all these links to it. Maybe we want to one up them, you know, and, and do uh, something similar, but even better. You know, how do we do better than they did? And you can reach out to those similar sites to get it. So I say it in a few words like it's easy, um, but for for entrepreneurs or, or people who are working really hard, uh, it's definitely a lot of work and takes a lot of persistence and, and diligence to to start getting some of these backlinks. And I mean, uh, the I mean, you mentioned so many interesting points um, about getting those backlinks. I mean, again, that's like such a very strong theme in the networking. I feel like is something that um, it's like. I, I mean, there is another episode, like very recently, where uh, we were just talking about like a similar idea, where it's just like you behind the computer, but that's not what the reality is. There's a lot of networking involved that you should be doing to take your business to the next level and get uh, a lot of those backlinks, which will then result in growth. Um, and another, the final uh, key factor. Uh, you mentioned is optimization, and I feel like this is the part where a lot of people really get stuck. Uh, so I'm wondering if you could talk about optimization a little bit and a few key things that we should be doing. Yeah, for sure. So so let's um, we'll zoom out a minute and we'll take a look at the big picture for SEO. So uh, Google's algorithm has over 200 ranking factors, but really we want to focus on about three, maybe four of them. So those three would be one is link building, which we've talked a lot about. Two is content creation, which we've touched on a lot. Um, not directly. We can talk about more how to create content um, for SEO. Uh, and then three would be the keyword research and optimization, which I clump into one area because um, – so basically, for, for people who are familiar with SEO, you know what keywords are. For people who aren't, basically, anytime someone does a search on Google, um, they're putting in these words, right? So like buy sweater or, you know, best sweaters for 2019, whatever they're putting in. And um, we Google, Google will give us the data. So will third-party data providers and say, look, here's for this uh, keyword, for this phrase that people are putting into Google, um, this is the number of times that people are searching for it every single month. We can look at just the U.S. We could look at uh, worldwide internationally, or we can look at a local region. If you're a local business, we can say, you know, people searching for plumbers in New York City, uh, this is happening, you know, 300 times a month people are searching for plumber uh, or plumber NYC or plumber near me, those kinds of keywords. We can get that data. We can also get the data on how competitive those keywords are, and we can also get the data on, or, or basically using our own um, intellect of how what the user intent is for those keywords. So if someone searches for buy sweater, then they're much more likely to convert on our site if we're selling sweaters. If someone's saying best sweaters of 2019, the user intent to actually purchase a sweater isn't as high, so it might not be as valuable for us. So we do this keyword research and we start to collect a lot of data and really understand, okay, you know, there's hundreds, there's thousands of different keywords that might be relevant for our website, for our business, for what people are searching for. Then we have to use that data to say, okay, this means that we should create a page on our website that's going to be optimized for this keyword. And oftentimes what we could do, Mark, is we can not only optimize that page for one keyword, we can optimize it for a few different variations of that same keyword. So someone might say best sweaters of 2019. They might say top sweaters of 2019. They might say, um, you know, uh, hot, trending sweaters now. Like these might all mean similar things. So we can, we can not only create the content but plan that piece of content for exactly what people are searching for which really creates the optimization. Now, when we do that, um, there's a few things we want to keep in mind. So number one is we want to plan the content and plan the pages based on what people are searching for. Because I think as content marketers and thought leaders, uh, what we often do is create um, content on things that we think our audience wants to know about and that we think are interesting and we think are valuable. Um, but we need to have a balance because also we need to create content that people are actually searching for on Google if we're going to get this monthly recurring traffic of people searching on Google. I mean, it's crazy. There's 
you know, within, I don't know what the, the highest level numbers are, the amount of searches per month on Google, but as you and I know, Mark, we're, we're searching all the time, uh, Google or Bing or wherever. And so for any business, there's tens of thousands plus of, of searches every month that could be relevant for your site. So it's so valuable to really do that keyword research and optimize for um, the searches people are doing. Um, the next thing I wanted to add was, okay, well, how do we optimize? If we know the keyword is best sweaters of 2019, what do we do then? Well, the first thing we want to do is we want to create a page for it on our website. Uh, most likely we want to create content around it unless it's not uh, something that a piece of content would satisfy that um, search query, satisfy that user intent. If someone's searching for something that they're not looking for content, I'm just saying buy sweaters, they will probably don't want to read about buying a sweater, they just want to buy the sweater. Um, but assuming it's content, we want to create that page, create that content for that keyword, and we want to optimize it, which means we want to use that keyword in the title tag of that page. We want to use that keyword in the URL slug of the page. So um, website.com slash, um, you know, best hyphen sweaters hyphen 2019. Um, and then we want to use that keyword in the header tags. Um, so at the top, there's the H1 header tag. We want to use it there. Uh, if there's subheader tags um, further down in the content, we want to use it there. We want to use it in the body text as well. We also even want to use it not only in the meta description, uh, which just helps if someone's doing that search uh, and they see the, the search results in Google, they'll see that keyword bolded. Uh, you might have noticed when you're doing Google searches. We also want to use it in internal links within the site back to that page because that's another indicator to Google that this page is about this uh, topic, this keyword, um, and there's an internal link within your own site back to it, which helps to um, to indicate to Google that you know this is what this page is about. But I say all this um, in a very um, uh, like. Uh, I don't want you to people to take this to too far of an extreme because you don't want to over optimize. You don't want to keyword stuff. You want it to be natural and normal and good for human beings. You don't want to jam that keyword in there 50 times. You just want to use it, you know, in the title, in the, uh, the URL um, uh, slug, uh, in the header and in the body text. But again, don't over optimize. Don't keyword stuff. Don't jam it in there 50 times. Just make sure you've done your keyword research and you're planning out that content in that page for it. And then you're using that keyword within the content naturally and normally throughout so that you now have an optimized piece of content for that keyword that people are searching for. Tom, a lot of great insights. And I mean, the keyword is just something that um, you, you you have to plan it in advance. I feel like it's something that you don't want that to be like one of the last things uh, you do. Uh, at the same time, as Tom pointed out, you don't want to overstuff either. So it is striking that balance. Uh, one thing you mentioned is that we should be spending 20% of our time creating the content, 80% of our time uh, promoting it. I'm wondering if you could talk about uh, how do we find that much time to promote the content? Because some people are under the thought that you need to write a 2,000 plus word blog post and um, then you can market. And that's like a lot of time alone that you spend creating it. So I'm wondering if you could talk about uh, how do we actually make that 80, 20 more possible? Because I know you mentioned it earlier in the episode. Yeah, I think I, I set like an impossible kind of standard there. And I share that because that's what um, there's a few digital marketers, uh, Derek Halpern and Brian Dean are two people who um, uh, promote that that viewpoint. And I think I think they're not that far off. 80, 20 might be an extreme, um, but I think it's to try to correct against the idea of just um, content marketing, of just creating content. And then it's kind of like if we build it, they will come. Um, that might not work so well either, especially if you're a newer website or you're a startup or you don't have any backlinks yet. So um, a lot of these things, and, and as you know, a lot of um, different activities and and efforts that need to be done uh, if we have a team, if we um, have a freelancer or outsourcing or have people to help us do it will help us to uh, get to our goals much more quickly rather than trying to do it all our own. But everyone's different, right? Some people are solopreneurs listening. Some people are in with teams or with businesses or hiring other people to help them. So um, I think, you know, and I think being intentional is just so powerful and it's so important. So if someone is really looking to get more organic traffic to their site to rank higher and to succeed in SEO, then I think you really want to nail those things. You want to do that keyword research. You want to create content that is very comprehensive content guides. Um, 
I recommend you know at least a thousand, two thousand words. Uh, I've done pe- pieces of content I haven't written myself, but I've hired other people, and you know it's like a ten thousand word. You've seen like the definitive guide or the ultimate guide or the complete guide of how to do blah blah blah. You've seen those. So you want to be much more competitive these days because um, there's just so much content on the internet. I think um, uh, uh, for all the, the WordPress. Um, uh, websites out there i think there's like 80 million plus blog posts created every single month and if you think you know that's been going on for years it's just been growing every single year so it's super competitive so um your content needs to be uh focused i think it's better to make five solid pieces of content that are longer and in depth and really tackle a topic or an issue well than to do 10 or 20 thinner shorter pieces of content because i think they just won't succeed as well these days um and then yeah of course the other thing right is like well how do you do all this outreach and how do you do all this link building and so um you know typically i mean you know what we'll do is we'll you know help people help us right and that's their job and that's their work and you know you can have uh, someone whose job it is to find those opportunities find those websites that might link back to you so maybe it's not you know something that because you, you could spend hours and hours just building that list of the the a spreadsheet of the website and the contact person and the email address probably not the highest and best use of your time maybe you can hire someone um, outsource or someone else helps you build that list um, and then to reach out to all those people so you know some people use uh, email email automation and they'll kind of blast out um, to a couple hundred websites or however many more. The problem is you won't get as high of a conversion rate um, doing that because people can tell it's a templated or it doesn't feel like, it just feels like, you know, I just got this spammy cold email. Um, so therefore, someone actually has to take the time to personalize uh, maybe the first few sentences or build a relationship. So it is very hard to scale um, in terms of making it compelling, making it personalized, uh, and finding those opportunities because it is a numbers game. Um, but at the same time, it's not something I'd recommend um, doing all on your own because it, it just is uh, quite a bit of heavy lifting to get those links. And so um, over time, we want to try to find actually what well, might be a tactic that will um, get us links in a more um, – efficient and optimized way. So one of those, for instance, for um, if we're using a tactic for PR, one of them is called Help a Reporter Out. Uh, and that's a free service of journalists making a request for a source. So, And, and the thing that's great about uh, Help a Reporter Out, for instance, there will be uh, a reporter who's writing um, an article on startups or entrepreneurship and say, uh, you know, I'm looking for an entrepreneur to provide me a quote on this topic. And it's like free game. Like you can get that you know, that journalist that's looking for someone to quote. And when they quote you, they'll have a backlink back to you. And, you know, you might have to pitch, um, you know, three of them to get a link or four of them to get a link. And that's got more competitive. But there are opportunities there that are lower hanging fruit um, versus just blasting out 200 cold emails and trying to get a backlink that way. And I mean, I really like the personalization touch because with so much spam email coming out, um, it's nice to see that personal touch email. I feel like people appreciate it a lot more and they're more likely to give you that backlink just because uh, so many, they're so used to getting all this outreach that looks and sounds spammy. So that is a very interesting point to bring up. And also, I mean, you mentioned that creating five really good pieces of content instead of 10 or 20 thinner pieces. I mean, Brian Dean, I think you mentioned him earlier. He like doesn't really create that much content, but when he puts something out, it's really good. So... Um, it's good to go for quality instead of quantity. If you could do both, that would be ideal, but not everyone can based on their business model and their current schedule. So definitely uh, one side of content creation to think about. And I know you've helped people with their SEO. I know you had your journey to acquiring the knowledge that you have today. So with that in mind, I'm wondering if you could share with us, where do you think most people get it wrong when uh, they approach uh, search engine optimization? Yeah, it's a, a great question. Um, I think there's a, um, a, a several different areas. Um, I'll tell you what comes to mind. One of them we mentioned is just kind of creating content without doing the keyword research first. Uh, so that would be one uh, we've touched on. Number two would be not doing link building. Um, so right now you can check your domain authority or you can check the number of websites linking back to your website. Uh, I would go check that now. So And there's different tools, um, but domain authority is one from Moz. You can go check that right now. Um, and you, you, know, you, you need to get 
enough links back to your site because what will happen is you can create an amazing piece of content. You can even optimize it for the keywords people are actually searching for. But the problem is if the Huffington Post or Forbes.com has a piece of content that's uh, optimizing the same keyword like, and there's enough competition for that keyword, you will like never be on page one without enough links and authority and trust to your site. So that means that um, in order to climb up the rankings, you need to have these links to your site. But it depends, right? If you if your business has been around for some time and you've a more established brand uh, or there's been some PR, it really depends on what that metric is. But I've seen far too many uh, newer startups, smaller uh, kinds of companies and websites where they just haven't uh, built enough or earned enough of those authoritative links to their site. So that's definitely um, something to be aware of. Um, there's there's little things like internal linking back to your site. There's a lot of technical areas like you know making sure Google can crawl your site and there's not duplicate uh, content issues and that your site is secure uh, has SSL because that is a ranking factor. Um, but I think like you mentioned Brian Dean and the nuts and the bolts and it's really about those things. Like if you really create amazing and helpful pieces of content centered on the keywords people are searching for and you know you're getting links back to the site. If you focus on those three ish things like that will drive the majority of of uh, rankings and traffic to your site. But if you get kind of sidetracked and you know you're trying to pretty up the site in some other place, or, you know sometimes as marketers we're like focused on too many things and we're not really putting enough. You know we're spread too thin, right? We're not putting enough resources and energy into one thing. So um, I think when that happens is is also. Um, it, it's a challenge and, and we're not going to really drive results with whatever marketing channel I believe we're doing without enough focus and enough intention and enough resources that we're putting into it ourselves or with our team. Because uh, it really just takes a lot to get there. And especially, you know, uh, my favorite is when I'm, I'm speaking to someone let's say their uh, prospective client. And one of the first questions is like, you know, I want to be on page one or I want to be position one for this keyword. How can you help me? And I'm like, well, dude, let's, let's take a look here. Um, this competitor of yours has been, had a website, uh, you know, since the year 2005, right? Mm -hmm. So they have like a, a 13 year, um, you know, advantage over you, right? And they already have, you know, a thousand websites linking back to them. And your website is 20. You know, so it's a little bit of like a gap here of what we have to fill, right? It, it just takes time. It takes effort. And SEO is certainly a long game. Um, and so you have to be prepared that you're going to carry on and march on for six months, 12 months, uh, however long it takes, because there are definitely marketing channels, whether it's paid search or, um, you know, social media marketing, these kinds of things where you can get the, the results and the returns a lot more quickly. You know, I mean, you can buy traffic tomorrow on Google ads or Facebook ads and be getting conversions. If you have a good landing page set up and a marketing funnel set up with SEO, it's just not going to happen like that. Um, Google has to come, you know, you have to create the content, you have to earn the backlinks. Google has to come crawl the site and kind of like keep up updating you or moving you up in the rankings. But some of these have gotten super competitive. And so the only way to, to win and succeed is to be even more competitive and put more focus and energy into it. Tom, a lot of really insightful um, uh, thoughts there. I mean, SEO is definitely a long game, but I feel like it comes down to the fundamental idea of you creating valuable content, optimizing it, and as you mentioned, uh, including the keywords and doing other things that allow that content to rank higher. So, I mean, like, uh, SEO is definitely something very important. You can get a lot of traffic, uh, quote unquote, free because there's definitely like a lot of uh, paid tools you usually most people use to get that Google traffic like SEM rush or something like that. But that simple concept of providing amazing content and optimizing, it seems to be that road to victory. And uh, if you want to accelerate in SEO or anything, I believe that the best way to do that is to read books. So with that in mind, Tom, I'm wondering if you could share with us three books that you believe will have a positive impact on us. These could be SEO books. These could be personal development, anything you want. Just three books that you believe will have a positive impact on us. Yeah, um, it's hard for me to answer because most of the great wisdom in SEO I have not found in books. I've found in uh, in blogs and uh, videos and that kind of thing. Um, so if I had to recommend from an SEO standpoint um, some great resources, um, Moz, M-O-Z is the name of the company. They've got some amazing resources. Um, they've got Whiteboard Fridays, which is like a 10-minute video every week that uh, Rand Fishkin started like I think 10 years ago. So they have amazing, valuable content there. Uh, we, we've mentioned Brian Dean now, like maybe this is the third or fourth time. 
time. So backlinko.com has really some amazing, um, some, you know, value, invaluable uh, insights for SEO. And, and basically those two are where I've learned most of my SEO, like probably uh, 70% plus of everything I know about SEO came from Rand Fishkin from Moz and uh, Brian Dean from Backlinko. Um, from a book standpoint, oh man, there's so many great books uh, about entrepreneurship and about growth. Um, the, the two that I found most helpful in the last year have been The E-Myth um, by, I think his name is Michael Gerber, has been really great for uh, really thinking about uh, a business as like a, an overall system and stepping outside of the business rather than just being in the business, uh, as well as um, the book Traction by Gino Wick. Uh, and this is, again, from the standpoint of like building a business and having multiple multiple people within it, uh, getting it organized and disciplined, having an org chart, having processes, having uh, effective meetings and those kinds of things. Um, so, yeah, those are kind of two different worlds. One is like SEO from like resources on the web. The other is entrepreneurship and business building from those two books I mentioned. Tom, thank you for sharing those great books and resources with us. Uh, we will include all those in the show notes, marketability.com slash E285. Also, the book Content Marketing Secrets for anyone who wants to learn how to uh, create, promote uh, content and also to boost their revenue. Uh, that will be in the show notes, but the link to that is marketability.com slash CMS book. And before we wrap up this episode, Tom, I've asked you several questions during our time together, but what do you believe is one question that we need to be asking ourselves more often? Ooh, about anything with uh, business or anything, SEO? Or anything what? you want. It's completely open. Oh, I love that. Um, I think, and I try to ask myself this question, which is, for the goal I have set for this quarter, or for whatever that time frame is, you know, for the month, the quarter, what do I, what's going to drive the most impact for that? And then what does that mean I have to do, like, today or this week or this month to get there. Because uh, as an entrepreneur, I find that there's so many like opportunities and there's so many distractions and there's so many like people emailing you and like, oh, there's so much chaos, right? So to try to get really clear on the goal you have set and what's going to drive that impact and what you have to do to drive that impact. I think that's basically like the most important thing you can be asking yourself as someone in business. Tom, thank you for sharing with us that great question and all of your great insights throughout our time together. Breakthrough Success listeners, if you want to learn more about Tom, head over to uh, www.shoreoak.com. You can also go to the Shore Oak podcast over at shoreoak.com slash podcasts uh, to get Tom's insights on how exactly we go about dominating SEO, uh, how to approach the three key things we talked about, links, optimization, and content. So you go over to those two resources. Tom, is there any other place where uh, we can find you as well? Yeah, um, just like you, Mark, I'm all over the web. So Google my name or Google my company name. You'll you'll find me, TomCasano.com. Uh, connect with me on LinkedIn. And I just want to say, Mark, thank you so much for having me on. You are fabulous. You inspire me. Um, and, you know, thanks for being just so awesome and asking great questions. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you, Tom. It was a pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks, Mark. How does over 100 retweets per day sound to you? My free ebook, 27 Ways to Get More Retweets on Twitter, has you covered. I use the methods within this ebook to get over 10,000 retweets every single quarter to learn.